Welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds videos. Beautiful night tonight. We're going to get some storms this weekend, so I thought I'd do another outside video in my backyard. Uh, there is a new, very interesting article out, without question, one of the most stunning in light of some of the things I've been told about UFOs from, uh, I've been reading in Jacques Vallée book, uh, Dimensions, and uh, I do believe Diane Pasolka touches this subject, as does Richard Dolan and others. This is in the Popular Mechanics magazine. I read this at noon on my lunch hour. Scientists produced a particle of light that simultaneously accessed 37 different dimensions. Now, that's wild. Here's what you'll learn when you read this story, and we're going to read this story together right now. <clears throat> the Greenberger Horn Zeilinger, the GHZ paradox, describes how quantum theory cannot be described by local realistic descriptions. A new study takes this GHZ paradox to new heights to see just how non-classical the quantum world can get. In the process, their experiment included photons in 37 dimensions, taking science even further down this strange quantum rabbit hole with the hopes of finding applications in these high dimensional systems. Classical and quantum mechanics don't really get along as the science of the subatomic can get, well, weird. Take, for instance, quantum entanglement. This says the state of one particle can be determined by examining the state of its entangled pair, regardless of the distance between them. This strange fact flies in the face of classical physics and even led Albert Einstein to famously describe this quantum quirk as spooky action at a distance. But if quantum has done anything, it has shown how Einstein's relativity is not the final word on much of anything anymore. Very interesting. This is what is known as quantum non-locality. This is where objects are influenced across distances beyond the speed of light, whereas classical physics follows local theory. The idea that objects are influenced by their immediate surroundings. This is a pretty sharp divide, as explained by the famous no-go theorem known as the greenberger horn zeilinger paradox. This essentially details how quantum theory cannot be described by local realistic description. Named for the physicists who described the paradox in 1989, the GHZ type paradoxes show that when particles can only be influenced by proximity, they produce mathematical impossibilities. And this is quite remarkable. As New Scientist reports, the paradox can even be expressed through a calculation where 1 equals negative 1. This paradox is useful in showing how quantum properties cannot be described by using classical means, but a new paper published in the journal Science Advances decided to see just how strange these paradoxes could get more the good for us, the public. Essentially, an international team of scientists wanted to see how unclassical particles of light could get, and the results were maybe stranger than the authors originally anticipated. This extremely technical experiment produced photons, or particles of light, that existed in 37 dimensions. Just as you and I exist in three dimension plus an additional temporal dimension, these photons required 37 similar reference points. This experiment shows that quantum physics is more non-classical than many of us thought. Technical University of Denmark's Zengao Liu, a co-author of the study, told New Scientist, it could be that 100 years after its discovery, we are still only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Pulling this off is not an easy thing to do, 
as Liu and his team needed to feed a version of the GHZ paradox into coherent light, even in color and wavelength, so that they could easily manipulate the photons. This essentially resulted in the most non-classical effects in the quantum world that has ever been created, according to the new uh, scientist article of Liu. We believe that this work has opened several avenues for future research, the authors write. We hope our findings can be used to build even stronger quantum advantages in high dimensional systems. In other words, if we've only discovered the tip of the iceberg with 37 dimensions, just imagine what quantum breakthroughs are lurking just below the surface. Now, this particular article just put out two days ago, June 18th, 2025. This particular article doesn't describe uh, how they know they were in 37 dimensions, how the photon was in 37 dimensions. What struck me is how incredibly interesting this is with our one of our current UFO ideas that the beings, the aliens, the NHI, call them what you will, are interdimensional. Now, and this is because of our classical science, we, we have been more or less focused on our dimensions. But of course, because they directly affect us. That makes sense. Three dimensions plus Einstein said time is one of the dimensions. But so this UFO oddity, this aliens being interdimensional, meaning that all they have to do is turn sideways and they can disappear. And then when they turn back, they can reappear or they can just simply boom, vanish. And then all of a sudden, boom, appear somewhere else. Yeah, this is the stuff of science fiction. This is this is woo woo. This is BS, except that we know that there are other dimensions. Now, uh, string theory has proposed 10 or 11. Uh, I have just recently read where there are now postulates, proposals of 15 dimensions, even though string theory is more or less waning in the physics community now. Um, it, it just hasn't panned out. And quantum gravity is a big issue right now. According to a lot of uh, researchers, they're exploring this idea of quantum gravity. Uh, is gravity a particle? Is it a wave? That's quantum gravity. Is anything a particle? And is anything a wave? Or is it both? Or is it neither? Or is it depending on which one is tested for. This is the weirdness of the quantum. This is the weirdness of this UFO stuff. Because now, this science fiction woo-woo aspect of the UFOs all of a sudden elevates because the orbs we've been noticing in the sky by thousands of witnesses worldwide uh, they blink in, they see them, they move around, they blink out. Uh, they blink on and off, they blink on and off, they come and go, they come and go. And we are told that sometimes from the orbs, beings come out. These beings of light is how they are described by several experiencers in Mesoamerica and Guatemala that R.D. Sixkiller Clark has documented in her excellent work. And now that doesn't seem so strange. Again, this, this UFO phenomenon, what makes it so attractive to so many of us is how it's stretching it's taking us out of the box of our thinking is what it's doing. It, it pulls us out of our box of comfort zone and three dimensions and puts us right down into 
Now, according to this study, 37 different dimensions. Now, this, I have read somewhere, I'm trying to think if it was Wolfgang Smith in his vertical causation uh, books, very good reads, every one of them. Someone was saying that, uh, that it might have been Donald Hoffman, actually, with his uh, with his interviews on YouTube, where there there could be millions of dimensions, and, and you go, that's that's impossible. Well, you know, just a few years ago, eleven dimensions was impossible. None of us ever talked about 11 dimensions in our childhood while we were sleeping out in the backyard, looking up at the stars, trying to comprehend the vastness of the sky and the cosmos. Uh, at best, we only had three or four dimensions at, at best. And now we're talking hundreds. And now light has been shown fundamentally to have at least access to 37 dimensions all at once. And so as we explore, as we test, as we look for ways to not only understand the photons, the light, or the UFOs, or the NHIs, with whatever means we try to comprehend them, Whitley Strieber mentions the extreme weirdness that is involved in his book, The Fourth Mind, the extreme weirdness of how these things are wanting to interact with us and how they're interacting with us. How do we deal with all of this? And now we've got this AI premise that's becoming our reality. Seems like we're either growing or we're blowing apart. I personally am biased in the favor of growing, hopefully, in our intellectual stature. At least I'm hoping we're maintaining our intellectual curiosity that allows us to put away both our disbeliefs and our beliefs that prevent us from looking at something weird or strange. When I saw this article, Light in 37 Dimensions, I immediately knew I was going to share it tonight because of this idea of the aliens being interdimensional. And now we know light can be interdimensional on the quantum level. Are the aliens popping in and out of our existence from a quantum world, a quantum aspect or dimension, if you will? And, and this, I don't know what to think of that. I'm not sure. That, that's sketchy, in my opinion entire beings popping in as whole beings from the quantum they man <laughs> that will show they really are way way further advanced than we even can postulate because we can barely get a few molecules uh from the quantum realm into ours and yet ours is built up from the quantum realm which is uh is heisenberg talked about is not a realm where there is substance. There is no substance. There's no stuff. Particles do not exist as things in the quantum realm, according to the greatest quantum physicists, especially Werner Heisenberg. He said they are more like Aristotle's potentia. They are more like halfway between being and becoming. Uh, it's a weird world. And all we've done is kept splitting the atom into smaller and smaller and smaller units. And when we've ran into the quantum world, everything changes. None 
of Einstein and his relativity is valid at all in the quantum realm. So there's the limitation, as Donald Hoffman says in some of his YouTube videos, a really good theory with really good mathematics will not just prove the theory, but it will also demonstrate and show you where the limit of that theory is and the limit of relativity stops its relevance at the quantum and then the quantum takes over and the quantum has been substantially demonstrated to be very accurate very real and very weird and that's kind of like this ufo stuff we're definitely we're in a <laughs> we're in an era where holy moly what a great time to be alive to be able to study all of this wild, fascinating, weird stuff into so many different crazy rabbit holes that you at first blush want to say, no, that's just insane. That's ridiculous. And then the more ridiculous it gets when they do tests in the quantum materials, they come out positive. It comes out verified. And it's weirder than science fiction. So is the UFO stuff. So I'm just saying there's, I will explore more of this as I, as I can, but uh, yeah, there's, there's some fun stuff to look into. So that's what I wanted to say tonight in the BYP Responds videos. I hope you guys have a great evening. Thanks for your support. Hit subscribe. Welcome to all you new subscribers. I appreciate all your support too. Uh, I will keep exploring all angles as I can find them and sharing them with you guys. Hope you have a great evening. I'm going to check out now and go study some quantum physics. That is some weird stuff. That's what makes it so much fun.